Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I spent four years in the United States Army, actually the North Dakota National Guard. And one of the things you find out in the Army is that there are things you need to know and there's things you don't need to know. Everybody thinks they need to know everything. But the Army was very good at telling people, you don't need to know it, move along. And the things you do need to know, they made sure you knew it. And why I say that is because God works on basically the same principle. There are things that we need to know about God and the universe and our world, and there's things about how God works that you do not need to know. If you need to know it, it's in the Word of God, and that is good enough. And folks, it's a big book. There's a lot there. I'm always amazed when people go, I don't know, why doesn't God tell me this? You figured out the whole Word of God already? I haven't. And my church pays me to read this thing. It is a lot of information. But it's there. But what is there, God is telling each and every one of us, you need to know it. And so the question that is put forth today that the Word of God will answer, a need to know, as it were, is where does evil come from? Oh, that seems like a simple question, doesn't it? But it has vexed humanity, especially those people who walk outside the Word of God for thousands of years. They need to know, they want to know. I've heard many answers to the question, but only one that was the right answer. There was a farmer who was a dairy farmer, and as he was working his fields, a car came up and parked and walked out to that farmer. And he asked the farmer, I saw your prize-winning Jersey milking cow out there. I was wondering, what's it worth? The farmer looked at him and said, well, that depends. Are you the tax assessor? <laughs> or did you, just hit my ca your ca did you just hit my cow with your car? <laughs> Two different prices. But in truth, it's a simple question, and there is a true answer in there. We can muddle it up, where does evil come from, but it really is a simple thing altogether. Christ gives us the answer. In fact, he gives us a list that comes out of it. It is from the hearts of us, from the hearts of humanity. Both Christian and unbeliever alike, it is our hearts that produce this. He makes a very exhaustive list evil thoughts from sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, covetousness, wickedness, deceitful, sensuality, evil, slander. Please stop, Jesus. Always got two more. Pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within. And even as I read that list, if you kind of start checking off, well, I don't do any of those things. The pride and the foolishness. Well, maybe. Maybe. I'm not here to tell you. I'm just reading the words of Christ. It's a long list, a complete list, and depressing list nonetheless. So where do these things like war and violence and starvation and suffering and such things come from? It's the hands of man. It's tough. It's a hard truth. There was a couple that went through couple counseling. And the counselor was competent and knew what he was doing. They were at each other's throat constantly. They were what, and I've seen this in my office, they show up for the, the last bit of counseling before the law office. So the counselor said, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. For one month, write down on a slip of paper everything that other person does wrong, fold it in half, and put it in a box. You have your box, he has 
his box. You write down everything. Whatever it is that drives you crazy, what's wrong, whatever, you put it on there and you put it in the box. And in one month, we'll come back to my office with the box. We're going to open it up and read it together. So the month goes by and they diligently write on the paper. And as they go to the, the office, uh, the wife goes first and she opens up the box and it's a full box. Uh, there's not replacing the toilet paper. The cap on the toilet, the, the uh, toothpaste is always off. And there's things like he doesn't listen. He doesn't take me serious. He's selfish. And worse and worse. And they read every piece of that paper and he sat there and listened in the counselor and it was kind of like our list Jesus gave. It was depressing at the end of it. She shared that list. It was long, impressive, complete, and exhaustive. You know, I always think that people ask the wrong question. The question I posed, the question Jesus was answering was, where does evil come from? But there's a better question, isn't there? Maybe a question I'd rather talk more about. Do you know the question? I'm seeing if you'll talk back to me or not. <laughs> no? Ah, good one. We'll get to that too, by the way. But yes, where does goodness come from? That's a great question, isn't it? There's an answer there too. Notice our society is so fixated on where evil comes from and forgets they ask, where does goodness come from? Because there is goodness in this world. What's the source of it? And we know that answer through the word of God too. It's the man sitting with our disciples here in Mark explaining this to him. It's the son of God. It's Jesus himself. He is the source of all that is good in this world. He is the source of all true love. He shows and gives what real compassion is. And he gives forgiveness and eternal life. Those are the good things. And when did this start? I know there's many times in Jesus' biography, we could say, from his promise to Adam and Eve, to his annunciation of conception, to his birth, to his teaching, even to Easter and Ascension and his judgment day. But the beginning of all this is Good Friday. Oh, we named it right, didn't we? It's not because it's good to watch our Savior die in a horrific way. Of course not. We are all humbled by it. But that is the source of goodness. That's the moment where Christ says, the world has changed forever. My people are forgiven. Christ says his people are eternal. God in Christ Jesus there is knitting together us, the family of God. You didn't know this. Maybe you did. I'm part of your family now. Feel free to invite me to birthday parties. <laughs> weddings. Whatever. I'm there for you. We're family because Christ made it so. We are a new family. God's eternal gifted family. That is good, is it not? I can tell you with certainty that one of the fears that we all have is that we'll leave this world and never see our loved ones again. Christ has taken away from that and said, of course you will. In Christ we will live forever. Well, let's get back to that couple. It's the man's turn to open the box. And they open up the box and the lid and he reads the first slip of paper. I love you. The next slip of paper. I love you. 500 slips of paper. I love you. I love you. I love you. They did not get divorced and they didn't even need to go to counseling anymore. For the relationship changed because love had changed it. Our relationship with God has changed. That is evil and wrong which broke that relationship. Christ in his love has made it right. He has no words of condemnation for you. He is not the, uh, the eternal going to make your life miserable person. He is our brother and our savior. 
Jesus even says, this one, when I read it the first time, I actually had to reread it twice. He's not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. Us. That is amazing. Christ has fixed our relationship. Now, I don't expect you to be perfect. Not now, and not until you draw your last breath. We are all sinners and saints. There's no doubt about it. But God now uses us to show his love to the world. Our relationship with him is perfect. Time to fix that relationship with others now, to bring more to this relationship. God will use us, his ambassadors, in fact, to do such. His brothers and sisters, we are the hands and the voice and the mouth of Christ, for better or for worse. We are Christ's people. And how will the world know about Jesus' love? Here we are. God send us. And we will go. Now, like most Lutheran pastors, in 15 years I realized I've not given enough concrete help to the brothers, to you, the people of God. I have repented of that. So I like to give on occasion a little bit of homework in the sermon. Now don't worry. I grade on a curve. And I don't check your work. But I do want to help this idea of how we love. There was a third grade retired teacher. She spent her whole life teaching, one grade, one school, her whole life. Retired in a small apartment, just a shade off of being destitute, quiet and lonely. And one day in the mail showed up a card, a little thank you card from one of her teachers. And he just said, he just read one thing where I should give thank you notes. And so he thought he'd try it. And he just said how much he enjoyed her class and how great it was and thank you very much. And he said, I'm sure that you get lots of these notes, but thank you, I'm sure you don't even remember me. And she wrote a letter back to him, a note back, saying it's the only thank you note she had ever gotten. And honestly, she was feeling like her life was wasted. And that one little note, that 50 cent stamp, and the dollar card, she said, it made everything I did in this world worth it. So how do we show Christ's love and kindness? This week, I know you're kind people, but find someone, anyone, and show just a bit of kindness. Go out of your way. Just to, and I'm not talking massive here, folks. A kind word, a smile, maybe a letter, an email, or a text even. Could you imagine a text? Hey, you're someone important. I haven't talked to you a while. Hope everything's going well. Send. What's that? Nine seconds of your life? And for your older people that don't text, your cards are most wonderfully appreciated. That act of kindness and love is what Christ uses to build his church. It's how it works. You remember, Jesus ate with sinners. He forgave the wicked. He taught the spiritually hungry and he called people out of darkness. And that's just us we're talking about. And he seeks to eat with all the world. He, seek, he seeks to forgive all the world. He seeks to teach the spiritually hungry in all the world. And he's always calling those out of darkness. So what is the source of good? It is and always will be our Lord Jesus Christ, the man we love, the man who saved us, the man who called us out of darkness, the man that when we go out into this world now, we say boldly as we leave these doors, here I am, Lord, send me. It's a wonderful Savior we follow, is it not? His burden is light and his love is eternal. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.